right, so about two days ago, I started playing with the feeds module. Um, so I've barely scratched the surf surface myself on this, but I thought it was very cool, so I thought I'd uh, share it with uh, everyone here. Um, I'm uh, playing with the website uh, now, and excuse the fact that it has no real theme at the moment, uh, but the client that I'm working with insisted that they have a um, uh, RSS feed that that they pull in with some news items that shows up on their homepage. Um, so uh, I was looking around for some uh, ways to do this, and I came across feeds. Um, if you install the feeds module, um, I'm only actually installing a couple of the modules that come with it, just the base feeds module and uh, feeds admin UI myself. There's lots of other goodies that uh, you can enable if you so choose. Um, there's also a ton of contributed modules um, that all work with feeds to extend its capabilities. So, um, so this is just the very tip of what you can do with it. Um, the, if you look at ah, the uh, admin screen for, um, for feeds, feeds lets you define uh, importers to import uh, a feed of just about anything from just about anywhere. Um, and you can have as many importers as you want. Um, you'll, you'll notice uh, that the, this one which I created um, is actually stored in code. Feeds works very nicely with the features module. So um, this feed is now built into a feature on this site. Um, and if I hit override, so if you go to, to edit uh, a feed importer, um, Every feed importer has some basic settings, and then it has uh, three different parts to it, a fetcher, a parser, and a processor. Um, the basic settings, uh, you can you know, set things like how often it refreshes, that sort of thing. Um, you can attach a, a feed to a node type or a content type, if you wish. Um, I'm using a very... Uh, uh, basic feed, I, I don't want to even touch nodes. I just want to store some information in a database and be able to pull it in and out. Um, uh, the fetchers, um, these are a couple basic ones that come with the, the standard feed. Again, these other contributed modules and such can expand this list a great deal. I'm using an HTTP fetcher, so it'll download content from a URL. Um, there's also a file upload fetcher, so you can grab information from a file. Um, and these also come with some settings, so I can have it auto-detect feeds on a site if I put in a, a URL that isn't itself a, a feed, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and then there's the parsers, um, which is how it analyzes this information you just gave it in the feed. Um, I'm using, again, the common syndication parser. It handles your standard uh, RSS feeds. Um, there's uh, other parsers that come with it and even more that you can add to it. Um, if you want to parse a CSV file or OPML or what have you. Um, and then finally, the processor. So what do you do with the, the data when you get it? Um, I'm using... Uh, the, the data processor, and I'll get to that in a second, um, but there's um, also some very interesting things that you could do with feeds if you wanted to. You can pull in nodes, you can pull in users from other sites, um, and uh, um, taxonomy terms, yeah, all sorts of crazy stuff um, if you, if you want to really get into it. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm using the data processor, and that is... Uh, taking advantage of the data module. Um, data module is a, another very fun uh, module that helps you handle database tables within your Drupal installation. So um, if I go to the, the UI for that, and again, there's, there's lots of other little sub-modules that add more functionality that I haven't enabled, I'm not even using here. Um, data also plays very nicely with features. It's exportable, so this again is built into a, a feature. Um, I have uh, my one little table here, um, I can define uh, fields uh, for my database table, um, set all the information for it, give it a name, that sort of thing. Um, configure it for views. Uh, this automatically, out of the box, is going to work with views. You can say what handlers you want to use for, for um, uh, the, the data in these different fields. 
which is very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I, this is the first time I've seen it. So, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, uh, and uh, there's some other fancy stuff you can do here. If you have any just free floating tables, you can adopt them with the uh, the data module, and and it'll take over uh, handling them, um, which can be useful. Uh, so I created this this uh, table in the database just to handle the basic information coming from my feed. And if I go back to my importer, oops. Um, uh, so I can look at the settings for my data processor. I can set uh, how long um, the uh, the uh, can zoom in on this. Uh, how long the um, the information is going to stay in the database table when it'll expire. Um, I can set it to when it imports stuff, replace existing records if they match that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, the one other part of this is the mappings for the data processor. So um, for each uh, source item that I'm pulling in from the feed, um, I select a, a target within my, my table um, and uh, map it. Uh, and by saying which ones are unique, it then knows how to match up the, the new ones coming in with the old ones. Uh, yeah? Uh, how, I, I've had problems in the past with uh, feeds API, aggregator module, a couple of them, and, and they're handling with CROM so that like, it'll actually spin up all of the resources on my server if it can't immediately connect to the service, or if it's trying to sync, you know, you have 100 nodes or 150 nodes that it's brought in, or, or data, data records, and it's trying to sync with the original service, and they haven't expired in the last four weeks. Uh, do you know if it has any custom settings for that, where it'll only match 20 at a time on every cron run, or is it, it just runs? Uh, I, I don't know, and I haven't really tested it with cron and all that. Um, I know that it requires the job scheduler module, which I th I'm assuming that that has something to do with that. I haven't looked does, into does it too much. Does anybody know if job schedule modular, a job scheduler module has settings for cron on how, how long a job will run? I don't know about that module, but if you're looking for something more cron control, you might want to look at super crons <coughs> or Elysium. Elysium. What's the other one? Elysium. Elysium. Someone's girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> give her some props. Right. She's always working behind the scenes. Always. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, okay. So, uh, the, other thing, the other requirement that my client had was they needed to be able to periodically, um, if they wanted to, change where the feed was pulling from, which is one of the reasons I went for this. Um, so I can just give them a link to... Um, this page, which uh, lets them just stick in a URL, whatever they want. If they want to delete all of the uh, um, existing stuff before they change it or something, they can do that. Real easy. Put in the URL, hit import, um, and they're, they're set up and ready to go. Um, as I said, it works with views. So this is my, my view, which is showing in a block on, on the home page right now. Uh, uh, all of the... the um, uh, all of the fields that I have in my database are available to me as fields in the view, and you can do anything you can do with views with this, um, which is which is nice. When you're uh, when you're adding a view, um, you'll see it gives a, um, a view type for the importers that you have. So this is my uh, uh, um, uh, MLBB RSS importer. Um, so I pick that, and then that gives me all access to everything in that table for my view. So, and that's uh, that's about it for feeds. Questions? Jeremy? No? Really? Anyone? Neil? Bueller? <laughs> what was the question by? What is that logo? It's a little bear eating, like a little, like okay. bear okay. eating honey feeds. Yeah. Out of a dog bowl. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, excellent. Thank you, Jeremy. Everyone, let's give him a warm. <laughs>